Hi, welcome to Carolina Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Zelenka, and today we're making Italian food. Mm, I enjoy eating Italian food. Uh, I don't make it quite so well. We're gonna attempt to do it in 30 minutes or less. Can I? Keep watching. If I can do it, you can too. The worst cook on TV. And the best chefs in the Carolinas. Not to worry, we're trained professionals. If you can learn a lot from your mistakes, You'll learn the most from Carolina Cooking. And a shrimp. If Tom can do it, looks delicious. so can you. Mm, now that's Carolina Cooking. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, this is incredible. Joining us today is a fantastic chef from Mia Familia, Chef Rick Regani, all the way from Lake Norman, North Carolina, which is just up the road from us here at the Hadco Showroom, yes, right? Yes, sir, about 20 minutes away. Okay, and we are making chicken melonese, which uh, I love Italian food. This looks a little bit like chicken parm to yeah, me, too. It's, well, kind of like a fancy chicken parm. Okay. It's uh, Parmesan and breadcrumb crusted chicken breast. Uh huh. And then we put uh, fresh basil, tomato, and uh, homemade fresh mozzarella on that. We melt that in the oven, and then we uh, top it off with the sherry vinaigrette. And then we serve with roasted Yukon gold potatoes, which are crusted in a little breadcrumb, garlic, and Parmesan cheese. And then we do some lemon butter braised asparagus. Wow. Well, this looks incredible. The entire crew has been waiting to dig into this plate, <laughs> but they're going to have to wait for mine, okay? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to attempt to do it in 30 minutes or less. We need to get started. Where do we, okay. where do we begin? Well, let's get this out of the way. Okay. And the first thing we got to do is cut the potatoes. Ah, okay. Take what? that potato, you're going to cut it lengthwise. These are the Yukon gold. Yukon gold potatoes. Okay. You can do it with any potato. Red potatoes work just as well. But uh, you're gonna go uh, lengthwise, this way. Lengthwise, okay. Yep, so you wanna match them up like this. Oh. You should get about four, it's a medium sized Yukon, so you get about four slices out of one potato. All right, so I kinda want. Uh, about a quarter of an inch. All right. Three eighths of an inch. Is that good? Yep, perfect. Right. Okay, you throw those all in that mixing cup bowl right there. Do I wanna take up the edge here? Uh, mm -hmm. If you can without cutting yourself, it's a good I, idea. Otherwise, I, you're gonna Well, that's how I try to do it. <laughs> all righty, you can just and I've, it's that. worked out so far. Yep, all right. just throw them all those all though and the other ones there into that bowl. These right here. That's good, that's about good, that's good right there. Okay, where'd you come up with this, by the way? These uh, potato the potatoes? Bits. Yeah. It was actually, uh, we were having a barbecue at my house and I wanted to cook everything on the grill. So originally they started out as grilled potatoes and I just came up with the breadcrumb idea and all everything and uh, we grilled them and they were awesome. So when we opened the restaurant, we, we tried to do it, but it was we do such huge volume that it was impossible to keep up with. So now we roast them in the oven. I got So they you. went from roasted to grilled to roasted potatoes. But you could still sprinkle all this stuff on. What is yeah, this? Yeah, you know, uh, right that's, bread, that's seasoned breadcrumbs. Right I here? season them myself. Is that going into the? Yep. You want to put the uh, give them a splash of olive oil first. All right. Just eyeball it. You're just gonna Fresh. you know just want to lightly coat them with olive oil. Mm, that's good. Good. Okay. All right. And you're gonna put salt and pepper. A little salt. Yep. Just a pinch. A little bit more. A little bit more. Uh, all right. A little bit of pepper. A little pepper. Yep, about a marble size ball of garlic there. A marble well, size you know, like, ball. Like a king marble. Oh, okay. <laughs> there gotcha. you go. All right. And a little pinch of parsley. Can I, should I be you just wait till everything's okay. all in there together. Put pinch a pinch of parsley. parsley. And this is just fresh parsley? Yeah, fresh parsley chopped up. All right. And then just sprinkle about half that cup of breadcrumbs on it. Half the cup of breadcrumbs. Okay. All right, that's good. Okay. Reserve the What's rest. all in the breadcrumbs? Uh, it's just, you can buy them pre seasoned or you just put a parsley, salt, and pepper, and a little bit of Italian seasoning. Okay. And, and then now? you stir them with a spoon. Yep. Get them good and coated. So could I actually, if because I have the time at the house, could I actually put these on the grill and they'd work out? Oh, fine? absolutely! They come out fantastic on a grill, like mm -hmm. a low, low to medium heat, and uh, yeah, just they come out beautiful. Okay. Oops. That way you can cook your whole meal on the grill without having to go back inside. This one doesn't really have any. Yeah, that's fine. We're there. gonna we're gonna spread them out on the tray okay. and we'll top them off with a little more brick on. All right. A little more olive oil on the tray. Just oh, eyeball just it up. Yep, just drizzle across the middle. Oh, okay. And then you just take, take your fingers and just spread it around a little. You're already dirty, so you can just spread it around. There you go. <laughs> Pour the potatoes out on the uh, tray. That's good. That's good. Enjoying yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then just spread them out? Yep. Just lay them out on the tray. Uh, face side, uh, you know, like some of these. If, yeah, if it's the end, put this nice side up. All put right. the nice side up, the, the open side. That one didn't get any? That's okay. We'll put some. We'll get it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I use some of this just to sprinkle yep, across Yeah, just sprinkle some of that across it. Okay. Absolutely. And then we're just gonna sprinkle a little cheese over the top of them as well. Ooh, what kind of cheese is it's that? It's uh, Romano cheese, Pecorino Romano, Romano cheese. No. Could I do Parmesan if I didn't Absolutely, have? Absolutely, yeah. All right. But you wanna use the finely grated, because if you use the uh, shredded, it'll, it'll burn. So that's good, yeah, just a light dusting of them. Oh, mm. well, I kinda like, like it a cheese. I like it a cheese. <laughs> cheese the is formaggio. good. The Fromaggio. The cheese is good. <laughs> I think okay, Fromaggio so is a cheese. Yeah, Fromaggio, yeah. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, a little mess. Okay. Uh, or a towel I, I could have used. All right. So uh, if you'll uh, do me a favor, get back up and grab the door for me. Sure. And these go in for how long? A preheated 400 degree oven. Preheated 400 degree. 25 to 30 minutes. 25 or 30 minutes. So what can we do in the meantime? Okay. We're gonna get go going on the chicken next. All right. Let's get it out of the way for you there. Okay, right. and can I put the chicken down here on the cutting board? Uh, or is there... it, it, honestly, it's best not to. This is a wood cutting board, and no matter how hard you clean it, you see, you know, juices from the chicken can get into the wood. Okay. Uh, so to save yourself, these, these are cheap. You can buy these, just a plastic sheet. Okay. It's a disposable plastic cutting board. So I throw the... Got a little messy. <laughs> All right, so... Throw the chicken breast down. Chicken breast down. Yep, start it with the fat end towards you. Towards you. This the, would be the fat end? Yeah, the top end. The point, put the point going away from you. Okay. Okay. You're going to take your knife. All a right. A small one like this would work. Okay. Let me show you, let me show you sure, first. Sure, go for it. Yourself. You want to put your hand over it, and you want to split it right down the middle. Okay. All right. And Should what's this technique called? Uh, it's filleting. Fillet. Wow, okay. How do you, fillet, how do you say that again? Fillet. Yeah, I've never heard that technique. Okay. I've never heard of a fillet before. Yeah. I thought it would be something, you know. I don't know, like chiffonation a <laughs> Chiffonade? No, that's vegetables. Alrighty. Okay. Am I doing this right? Yes, sir. Alright. All right. And now we gotta make Oops. some I that's didn't fine. really. That's okay. fine. It's okay. It'll yeah, all come it's out. not quite as good as yours. Just slide it out of the side, right. side there for a second while we make some egg wash. You can scramble two eggs in there. Ah. One. Two. And so we're gonna bread these up yep. see with the flour. Flour, and then egg, then breadcrumbs. Dry, wet, dry. Dry, wet, dry. dry. Get, that's how your batters usually work. Where you can go, wet, there's batters that are wet, dry, wet. Or now, sometimes when I wet. do this, they, they say I like add water or milk. Or no, you can. Uh, the milk, you can. I just think it's a waste. I think it sticks better when you just, my opinion, when you just leave it, just leave it alone. Just straight okay. up eggs. Okay. Alrighty. All right. Are we all done here? Yep. All right. Let me just out of the way for you. You go flour, egg. Dry, wet, wet and dry. Another dry. It's a good rule of thumb. Okay. And you sprinkle a little bit of that Romano cheese and in those breadcrumbs. Sure. Just make in the breadcrumbs. And just, um, yeah, that's good. All just right. A little more. And then just mix that around. Okay. All okay. Right. And you grab your chicken. If you go ahead and grab one and show me what you want me okay. to do. Okay. You take one here. You're okay. just going to flour it. Mm hmm. Dip it in the egg. Dust okay. off the excess flour. You don't want a ton of flour. All right. You get pasty. Okay. Roll it through the egg. And then lay it in your breadcrumbs. I like to wet my hand off and then just flip it over. Press it down. Flip it okay. over. Exactly. Press down the other side. Ah. Okay, you should return it to this plate. All right, and then going back to the plate right here. Yep, and then so we'll just, we need another one. Yeah, we'll do two. We'll do two. All righty. Okay. I got two of the prettiest. I'll hold this up for you. One of mine, one of yours. All righty, and then shake it off. Yep. Dip in the egg. <laughs> okay, yeah, drip the excess egg off too, and right into the breadcrumbs. Okay. And I usually serve about two per person. The eight ounces total. Okay. Healthy portions. Yeah. Like that? Yep, perfect. Voila. Throw it on there, we're ready to go to the pan. All right. You want to tell you a towel? He is in a towel this time. So all right, good, good get idea. Get it all over the place. It's a real good idea when you're handling raw meats, and we're going right to the pan, you definitely wash your hands with the raw chicken okay. before you go on to the next step. So here we are. We're gonna heat that up, cook it on a medium heat. Medium, gotcha. Yeah, medium high, medium high. Okay, medium high, gotcha, check. All right, gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. A little olive oil. Uh, oh, I got yeah. it. Yeah. And that's a couple, good? Two tablespoons, a little bit more. Two. There you go. That's right. good. I'll we'll let that heat up for a second, and you can just... Uh, we can just talk, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. How long have, have you been there? At me, me, we've been on for yours? Yep, yep, we've been on for nine months now. Okay. Yeah, I'm an executive chef and the owner. Oh, great. And I have a, my best friend is also my business partner. Oh, that's great. And, uh, yeah, we own it together. It's real good. It's, yeah. it's going real, real well. It gets busier, busier and this all is, the time. And this is a recipe I could get there. Absolutely. Everything, uh, yep, everything we're doing today is exactly how we serve it at the restaurant. All right, it doesn't matter which side goes nope, in first? not at all. All right, one. Okay, lay those down. Those are going to take about three to three minutes per side. Well, that'll be plenty. When we come back, uh, we're going to go to break right now. And when we come back, we'll be finishing up our chicken. We'll be making asparagus, too, when Carolina Cooking continues. So this is... Uh, yeah, just going to let it go for about three, three to four minutes on each side. The Carolina Cooking Cookbook is in stores now. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, The Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Barnes & Noble, Target, Orders Books, Amazon.com, and our website, carolinacooking.tv. That's right, carolinacooking.tv.
TV. All the recipes you've seen on the show, wine pairings, advice from the chefs, and Tom. Get the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas in the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Chef Rick Regani from Mia Familia in Lake Norman, North Carolina. If you want to find out more about his restaurant or our chef here, visit our website, carolinacooking.tv. My chicken, I have fried it all up to a golden brown perfection, if I must say so myself. It's looking pretty good. Looks pretty good, And uh, we also made some extra for the crew, huh? Let's hear it. That's excitement. Yeah. And... Yeah. Now what do we do? Okay, now you're gonna take the Romano cheese. Mm -hmm. Gonna put a light sprinkling over all, 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 all four pieces of chicken there. All right. all right. Okay. And then you're gonna take these beef steak tomatoes. I like to use these in the summertime because they're available, mm -hmm. nice and right, and they're nice and big, and they cover the whole chicken. Okay. So you're welcome to use any kind of tomato you can find, right. as long as it's very right. We're just putting them right on top. Just one right? on each piece. Should we be putting proportional to the size chicken they nope, are? No, that's fine. A little extra okay. is totally fine. I don't like that one very that much. That one's an ugly tomato. That's ugly. Okay. There you go. There we go. Okay, are. you're going to put one, one basil leaf on top of each tomato. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just lay it across there flat. One basil leaf. Yep, you're just going to lay right. it out like that. There we go. All right. Up. Oh, I got two here. That's okay. They're little. It's okay. You can put two. Put one there. All right, now you just want to lay one piece of cheese across each of them. Now, this like is that. mozzarella cheese you made? Yeah, I make this myself from scratch really? at the restaurant. Yep. Does this come from a cow or from yep, a goat? Yep, it's cow's milk. Okay. Yep, mozzarella so, cow's milk. do you start at the milking of the cow? Yep. Or you just... No, no, we start at the milk. Okay, start you milk. start at the milk. You're not no, out there like in no, the barn? I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, like, I'm making mozzarella <laughs> yeah, from no. scratch. No, I start okay. at the uh, Harris Teeter. All right. Oh, I see. All right. Okay, now those are all set, so we're just going to put them aside because all they have to do is go in the oven for about two minutes just to melt the cheese. Okay. So next we'll move on to all our right. asparagus. We're going to blanch our asparagus. Cool. Okay. All right, so I got a pot of boiling water. Yep. Make sure you don't burn yourself there. Okay, that is a pot of boiling water. Yes, sir. All right, and you're going to take Why all Why are we blanching the asparagus? Well, you're blanching because if you were to just to cook them from, from start in the pan, they would turn brown on you. So by the blanching process, is we, we drop them into boiling water for about 45 seconds. Let's turn that up. Blanch them in boiling water for about 45 seconds, and then we drop them into ice water, and that locks in that vivid green color. So you're okay. gonna take, go ahead and take those and put them right in the pot. Go ahead, all of them. All right, and then we're gonna wait a few seconds here. While that's going on, we're gonna take this front pan, put okay. it on a low, medium, low heat. All right. We're gonna go ahead and put all that butter in there. All this butter? All the butter. Butter gives the food a flavor. Mm -hmm. All right, you're gonna squeeze that lemon in there, and how I like to do it, let me just show you. I like sure. to squeeze in my hand, and then you can use your fingers as a strainer. As long as your fingers oh. and hands are clean, to pop out the seeds like that. That's Otherwise, a good you tip. get the seeds in there. Okay? I do the fork. Fork works mm. good too. Fork yeah. works good too. End of a spoon works well. End of a spoon. And then know. you're gonna put a pretty pretty good amount of salt and pepper in there. Put it right have it put it right in the butter. How 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 much? Good is good pretty... pinch. Good pinch. Like that? Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then a good pinch of black pepper. Good pinch of black good pepper. Good heavy pinch. Yep, I like black pepper. You can put less or more. Okay. Whatever you like, and we'll now get this, this one around. Turn it up a little bit. Blanching enough. Yep. And oh. if you really want to check, just to be sure, you want them to be still very firm, but you know, pliable. Firm so, but pliable. So we're gonna go ahead and grab, okay. grab them out of there, in, in the and right ice. into the waste ice. And what does the ice do again? I'm sorry. Now the ice shocks them. So the ice, if you were to just take them out of that boiling water and put them on a plate they'd just turn like a dark army green and they'd be limp and lifeless. The ice stops the cooking process and locks in that green color. Okay, all right. Okay. And how long do they stay in there? Uh, until we're ready to use them here. So oh. I'm gonna turn this up, get this going a little bit. All righty. And then uh, we're gonna take them right out of the ice. You can do that now. You just wanna leave them in there for at least, you know, 30, 40 seconds, just, just to get them cold all the way through. Oh, okay. Okay, see how bright green they are? Yeah. Okay, and then we'll drop right into the butter. I like okay. to try to get them all going in the same direction so that when you plate them up, it's I just see. For, for presentation sake, it's better. Everybody, stay in the same direction here. Yep. Uh -huh. no, ice, no, okay ice, no ice, no ice, no ice, no ice. Ice is bad. All right. Mm -hmm. A little Oops. bit, a little bit's okay. It's not gonna hurt you. Sure. Better to take them out all at once. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing it yeah. now, but I didn't quite. <laughs> Let me get, get those that. last couple there for you. All righty. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna use my hand, and that's good. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna let those go for. About three minutes, because they're nice and skinny. Now, asparagus come in varying sizes. These are standard asparagus. Standard. Um, and then there's 
substandard. The, well, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, than... they're standard asparagus. These are really like pencil asparagus, but this time of the year, these are abundant. Sometimes they're thicker. You get, okay. you know, and sometimes they're like tree trunks. So it's all going to depend on how the size of them is going to depend on how long you're going to blanch them for. But just know that you want them slightly tender, pliable, pliable. I is, got is you. A word all for right. it. And then now those are simmering. We'll turn it back down to a really low heat. Okay. And we'll let those go for about three minutes in the butter. Fantastic. Well, we can sing or we could put the chicken in the oven. If yeah, you we can to. put the chicken in the oven right now. Let's take about I three was minutes. I for the singing one, actually. It's okay. Uh, I'll go back and get the door okay, for you. Okay, sir. Okay, we're going to put those in and the, our, just our potatoes are still cooking. We're just going to put them right in the same oven on the same temperature. Potatoes right. won't okay. interfere. They'll both potatoes. be done in and about four to five minutes. Uh, three, 375. All right, fantastic. We'll keep working on the asparagus. And when I come back, I'm going to talk to Eris Ragazais and find out which wine he's paired with our Italiano feast when Carolina cooking continues. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with our wine aficionado, Eris Ragazayas, and uh, Eris, we're making up a chicken melonnier, which mm -hmm. I, I think chicken, white meat, white wine, beef, red meat, red wine. Mm, not all the time, no. No. Uh, in, 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 in this case, actually chicken is a very versatile okay. uh, dish, and when you put tomato and cheese, oh, you, you yeah. bring it more into a little bit of fresh country. tomato, fresh mozzarella on there. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, I've picked a Cabernet Merlot blend from mm -hmm. Greg Norman. Okay, the golfer Australia. Greg Norman. The professional golfer, yeah. world class golfer Greg Known Norman. Known as the shark. Exactly. And the reason why he's known as the shark was because he so aggressively went after winning. Mm -hmm. And that same drive and determination is now being focused on making the best quality wines. Ah. And I think he succeeded. Ah. The, the wines have great richness, uh, they have complexity, mm -hmm. and yet Greg charges a very, very fair price for his wines too. Mm. I'm getting like, um, I don't know about you, oh, I'm getting, that's classic yeah, I'm getting fresh mown lawn, I'm getting I'm um, <laughs> maybe a wooden tea. Smell maybe uh, I don't know maybe the smell of a foreign. I think it was way too much. Gold. Okay, all right. Mmm. <laughs> oh, classic Cabernet good. flavors. Mm -hmm. Softened with with some Merlot. Uh, nice rich palate. Yeah. But you know chicken's not going to want those aggressive tannins like some Cabernets have. Yeah. And this is going to give good flavors, but very very mild in the, in the way of tannins, and it'll blend in beautifully with the uh, especially with that fresh mozzarella. Uh, in there with the uh, chicken. Yeah, and the fresh mozzarella he makes it himself. It's really incredible. So I think you've made an excellent choice here, Eric, Harris, because um, I think this is, is not going to be too too much. You know, it's not that's too That's exactly red. the kind of wine yeah. you want for a chicken dish. Well, that's great. Thank you very much. And uh, in fact, i got to get back to the kitchen now and finish up and, and get to eating. So I'll be doing that <laughs> when you. Carolina cooking continues. Yeah. So um, I think You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Chef Rick Regani from, uh, well, Lake Norman, North Carolina. Our uh, chicken already done out of the oven, melted just perfectly. We didn't want to let it get brown, right? No, yeah, you just okay. want to melt it a little bit. Our potatoes, potatoes all are done, done at the perfect, same time, so toasted. those are ready. So we have one more step to do. Right? We got to make a, a, a sherry vinaigrette that we drizzle over the chicken mm, and the tomato. It gives it a lot of flavor. Okay. So you're going to have a missing cup here. You're going to mm -hmm. take that olive oil, dump that in there. All of it? Yep, it's about an eighth of a cup. All right. You're going to dump about half of that lemon juice in there, which would be about a, two tablespoons. Yep, it's good. And then okay. we're going to put about two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. Just shake it. You can eyeball it. Mm. A little bit more. Mm. That's good. Okay. And then we're going to put a pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. Pinch of salt. Pinch of pepper. Pinch of pepper. And we're going to whisk that together. Okay. Just go ahead and whisk it up. Whisk it really good. It's going to separate because it's not emulsified vinaigrette, but you just, you know, as best as you can do. Mm, tasty. tasty. Got a little on my hand. Yeah, there you go. All right, and then we'll be, we're all set. We're ready to go and plate this up. Oh, okay, fantastic. So we have all that set. Yep, get Here, this out of the way. Set that aside. Yep. And now I've got to make it look as pretty as yours did. I'm just going to throw a spoon there for you. May or okay. may not be possible. What goes on down first here? So here, let's go ahead and cut a lemon slice, though, for your garnish for oh, when you're done. okay, fantastic. Here's a knife for you, sir. Thank cut you. a thin lemon wheel. A thin lemon wheel. Okay. And that's it. You're all set with that. 
Okay, now you take four potatoes. That's how we do it at the restaurant. Oh, four. Okay. Lie them out like a deck of cards. Now, is this how you do it, or is this how Mama does it? Uh, this is how I do it. You have your mom working there, though, don't yeah, you? Yeah, she does. She's one of our managers. She does a real good job. My two little sisters work for us as oh, well. Oh, that's fan Is that why you called it Mia Familia? Yep, yep. And our, well, our slogan is also you know, Mia Familia Restaurant, which means my family in Italian. Mm -hmm. And then our slogan is Join the Family. So, I got you. For everybody's family. And it's a little reference to the... Uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. We like well, we have actually a booth in the corner where they call the mafia booth because it's the walls are behind you, so there's no one with their ba <laughs> your your back is not to anyone. That's uh -huh. funny. Okay, right. you're just gonna take a, about half of those asparagus. Half asparagus. This lay them across here on a diagonal. Perfect. All right. Okay, and then we'll grab two pieces of our chicken. Two. And I like to point the skinny end towards the sky, but it does not matter whatsoever. All right. Oh, I like that one. Hang on. Do it I'm, I'm, it's want. mine. I'm eating it. So don't, <laughs> don't get alarmed there at home. This is the one that me and the crew are eating. They don't mind me touching everything. <laughs> no, no, Just, no, no. All right. Because uh, I like the basil leaves there sticking okay. up. Okay, that looks that good. That was nice. Okay. All right. And, and then you're going to take that and you're going to drizzle it over the chicken and tomato. Put a little on the plate. Go ahead. Yeah, just, you want to get a good little bit, bit, bit more on the chicken. Oh, okay. Okay, get a little on the plate just for the looks. A little dipping. There you go. Okay. Alrighty. And now we're just gonna sprinkle a little Romano cheese over it. A little Romano. A little parsley. A little parsley. Voila, you're done. Hey, if you want to find out more about this recipe or the wine or our chef here or his restaurant, visit our website at carolinacooking.tv. I'm Tom Zalinka here with Chef Rick Regani from Mia Familia. And that's twist it up. Yeah, there you go. Oh, this looks incredible. That's, that's it. Carolina cooking. Grab a fork and dig in. Ready to eat here. I'll get one of these. Go to carolinacooking.tv for the recipes featured on this show. Plus, on carolinacooking.tv, you'll find more information on the wine, chefs, and foods of Carolina Cooking. That's carolinacooking.tv.